So I did my studies, bachelor, master's and PhD in Brazil at Federal University of Minas Gerais. And uh, during the PhD, we had this Brazilian program that um, we, it's called like sandwich PhD because we spend part of your PhD abroad and then later you come back. And then we had the chance to, to go spend some time abroad in a place of our choice. Uh, so here I, I have to say I was very lucky that during my studies it was a very good time in Brazil with a lot of investments in higher education. Unfortunately that's not the case at the moment. But so I, I, I wrote the project and uh, at the time I decided that I wanted to go to this institute in Poland. So I, I went to spend one year in Gdansk in the institute called Kcik. And this was a very nice experience. I could uh, join many projects, which I could learn a lot. And it was also the time that I started building my network of international collaborators. Then I went back to Brazil to finish my PhD. And after that, I went to the Netherlands for my first postdoc, which was again a different experience. So my, my postdoc was at QTech in Delft University of Technology. And uh, this was a a bit different environment than the university environment I was used to because QTech is quite a research mission driven uh, institute completely focused on quantum technologies. But it was very interested to be immersed in this place where there is research being conducted in all different uh, platforms for implementations of quantum technologies. Uh, and since 2019, I'm at the Heirsch Hein University of Dusseldorf, and I'm part of the cluster of excellence, matter and light for quantum computing. And uh, then again, I, I would say now I'm back to the university environment, which I like a lot. Uh, it's still very exciting because now I have a, a bit more independence. I'm in a more senior position, senior part of my postdoc, let's say. I can uh, supervise students and uh, lead projects a little bit more independently. The team is very nice, so I think, again, there is a lot of learning to come and I'm very happy. From the problems that uh, I could experience myself, I can mention that, for example, in Brazil, uh, it's shamefully clear how the access to higher education is connected to your economical status, which is connected to the color of your skin. And this is very sad. Uh, but when I was towards the time of my PhD, there was uh, some change that started to be implemented at the university, things like um, affirmative actions or also broadening the number of available places, so to really increase the possibility of access to higher education. Uh, this started to happen, which changed a little bit the profile, but there is still a long way to go. And another problem that I could also see and experience in all the countries that I've worked on is the so-called leaky pipeline, that uh, when we look at uh, higher and higher positions uh, in in academic career or in, in higher education, the number of female researchers taking these positions, the number, no, sorry, the percentage of female researchers taking these positions decreased significantly. And this I could see in all the, the places that I've been in. So I would say maybe these are the two things I can think of that I most experienced. QTURN was conceived by three young researchers, so Anna Belen Sanz, Jelena Gurianova, and Juan Ibermejo Vega. And uh, well, as they say, QTURN was triggered by the need to address some problems and issues that were happening in our community. And uh, I, I recall that at the time that QTURN was created, already some uh, informal discussions were starting to happen in some conferences. Uh, for example, for the woman side of side of the community we were saying hey it's not okay to have a conference where all the invited speakers are male maybe we should rethink it um, so these discussions were already happening and i think QTURN is uh, a great initiative because it uh, gives a space so that these discussions can happen in a systematic way and also reach a broad audience uh, 
So I myself, I was a participant, a speaker, and I was also part of the program committee of Qturn 2018. And uh, I really liked the result of the initiative. So for this edition, I had the chance to join the main organizing committee. And uh, so for me, the way I see it, it's like this. We, we all like to solve problems and to find the optimal solutions to all the problems. So why not bringing these thoughts and these skills also to our working environment and um, our working conditions and how uh, we interact as a society? Because if we want to be good scientists and do good science, we also need to, to have a good working environment, a healthy environment. So I think it's great that uh, Qturn has this space for bringing the scientists to discuss what are the issues that are still bothering us at the moment and maybe not uh, allowing our full potential to be explored because we have some uh, not, not so healthy work environments. So I would say that Qturn 18 was a very successful event and I can also say that as a participant. But uh, the organizers, they got very good feedback in the uh, final survey that was sent to the participants after the event. And uh, so, for example, uh, we had a good gender, there was a good gender balance at Qturn 2018. Also, a lot of participants from South America and Qturn took place in Brazil. So it shows that it really engaged with the local community. Um, the event was able to support uh, travel of some of the participants, which is also nice if you want to increase the access of people to uh, such events. So uh, for Q2020, we were already expecting an increase in comparison to the previous edition. But now that the event is taking place online due to the coronavirus pandemic, the numbers are much bigger, so we have a much bigger event ahead. So at the moment we have 450 registra registered participants and I expect that this number is going to grow in the next week. Uh, this time we also tried to make an active effort to increase diversity in our committees, especially geographical diversity that was not so good at the first edition. So now all the committees are much bigger, both the organizing committee, the program committee are, are bigger. We also have uh, the science program is also enlarged and this was to accommodate all the many good submissions that we received. And the awareness program is also enlarged. So this year we are going to have a six awareness session. And in particular, one of the sessions is going to be focused on mental health. That was one of the main requests from the previous participants, from the previous event. And yeah, I hope it's going to be, to be a great event. I think if I see that uh, the participants are really interacting the different platforms of the conference, so we hope that we chose uh, a good format for the event that can really foster uh, networking and a lot of discussions. So I would be extremely happy to see that uh, despite the fact that the, the event is online, people can really uh, get to interact with each other. And of course, if everyone has the same uh, safe and welcoming feeling that I had in the 2018 edition.